welcome <clears throat> i welcome you all to this lecture in the course samasa in paninian grammar 2 as is our practice we begin our lecture with the recitation of the mangala charana विश्वेश सच्चिदानंद वंदेहम योखिल जगत चरीकर्ति बरी भर्ति संजरी हर्ति लीलया विश्वेश सच्चिदानंद वंदेहम योखिल जगत चरीकर्ति बरी भर्ति संजरी हर्ति लीलया the features of the process of compounding or samasa that we have studied so far can be summarized in the following manner at the input level samasa is like a sentence so sentence is an input so there are sups that are taken and interrelatedness of the sups as the input and the output is samasa is a nominal root a pratipadika to which is added a sup which can also become the input for another process of samasa if so desired by the speaker so input is a sentence and in particular sups and output is a pratipadika to which sups are added what is sup we shall see in this particular lecture let us try to understand what doesn't happen in the process of compounding even though au in rama lakshmana plus au and tas in gama plus tas are interrelated as we showed in the previous lecture in the form of also an equation they never get merged together as one meaning unit as well as one word unit so tas is a suffix which indicates dual number present tense third person and also karta agent of the action of going and in this particular sentence these two kartas agents are none other than ram and lakshman so ram and lakshman are in this way related to tas of course rama lakshmana 
are related to tas through au and we have said that the semantic interrelatedness is the basis for the process of compounding to take place now it needs to be made very clear that even though rama lakshmana plus au and au is the head here and tas in gama plus tas they are interrelated they never get merged together as one meaning unit as well as one word unit and never out of them one unit is derived as output this is to be remembered au and tas are representatives of set of suffixes known as sub and thing respectively au is part of sub suffixes and tas is part of thing suffixes also it is to be remembered that the process of compounding or samasa depends on the desire of the speaker and so far is always performed within one sentence never is it performed in between two sentences thus we can say that it is always inter sentential and never intra sentential in a nutshell samasa can be described as sup plus sup now sup is a pratyaya so this sup will be added to a prakriti which is left blank on the left hand side of the plus sign so then we have two sups along with their prakritis added to the left of the plus sign now the prakriti is known as pratipadik over here the prakriti of sup is known as pratipadik and so these two sups they do make a samasa adding a sup pratyaya to a pratipadik makes it a pad according to the definition of pad provided by panini in the sutra suptin antam padam and never sup plus thing gives rise to a samasa in other words never pratipadik plus sup pratipadik is the prakriti of sup and dhatu is the prakriti of thing so pratipadika plus sup plus dhatu plus thing this never results in a samasa similarly dhatu plus thing plus dhatu plus thing this is also theoretically not eligible to be generating a samasa this we need to remember samasa is generated when two or more sups come together and are semantically interrelated now let us take a look at 
the soups. They are 21 soups and are stated in 412 in this long sutra. Swaujas amout chas tabhyam bhis ngebhyam bhis ngasibhyam bhis ngas os am nyosup. This is one word having 21 elements placed side by sides, side and with the help of the technique of Pratyahara, Panini terms these 21 suffixes as sups and these suffixes are to be added to a Pratipatika because of 411 namely Nyap Pratipadikat. So these 21 sups rewritten in a clear manner are these and here we have already divided them into 7 rows and 3 columns. So the columns indicate the number singular, dual and plural and the rows indicate the vibhaktis prathama, dvitiya, trutiya, chaturthi, panchami, shashti and saptami. Now remember these sups are the input of samasa. So when you find any of these elements at the end of two words which are semantically related, there is a possibility that they could be compounded. They are S, AU, AS, AM, AU, AS, A, BHYAM, BHYAS, A, BHYAM, BHYAS, AS, BHYAM, BHYAS, AS, OS, AM, and E, OS, SU. These are those 21 suffixes. When these sub-suffixes are added to a pratipadika, the subanta forms are generated. Subanta, subanta. Now on this slide, we show the 21 subanta forms where the 21 sub-suffixes are added to the Pratipadika Rama. So we have the forms Ramaha, Ramau, Ramaha, Ramam, Ramau, Raman, Ramena, Ramabhyam, Ramaihi, Ramaya, Ramabhyam, Ramebhyaha, Ramat, Ramabhyam, Ramebhyaha, Ramasya, Ramayoho, Ramanam, Rame, Ramayoho, Rameshu. So these forms are input of Samasa. So these and similar forms when are interrelated Samasa can take place. Let us now take a look at the things of excess. Things of excess are 18 in number and they are stated by 3478. Once again we have a big sutra involving all these 18 suffixes placed side by side. The sutra reads Tiptas chi siptas tha me vasmas tadam jathasatham dvam idvahi mahing. These 18 things of things suffixes are divided into two groups of 9 which is further divided into 3 columns and 3 rows. Each row indicates the person and the column indicates the number. So the left hand side 9 suffixes 
ti tas ji si tas th and mi vas mas these are the suffixes which are part of these 18 suffixes t is third person singular tas is third person dual and g is third person plural and so on and so forth the second set of nine suffixes includes ta atam ch thas atham dhvam i vahi and mahi these nine suffixes ta atam ch etc they are termed atmane pad suffixes in panimyan grammar by the sutra tangana atmane padam now the point to be remembered over here is that these suffixes never become an input of a samasa which means that any pad at the end of which these suffixes occur can never be an input of a samasa and here are those forms these are the tinganta forms ting ant tinganta and the forms are nayati nayatah nayanti nayasi nayatah nayath nayami nayavah nayamah and the atmanepada forms are nayate nayate nayante nayase nayethe nayatve naye nayavahe nayamahe in contrast with these nine atmanepada forms the other nine forms they are termed as parasmai pad so these are the tinganta words and the most important point to be remembered over here is that they never become an input of a samasa now let us try to understand what is the meaning of the word samasa the word samasa is derived by adding the suffix a to the verbal root asa with the preverb sam so sam indicates together the verbal root asa means to throw and a indicates action or the state so when these three meanings are put together we get the meaning of the word samasa namely the act of throwing together something in a nutshell we come to know that samasa is the act of throwing together the sounds which is nothing but the act of throwing together the sounds from oral cavity which reach the eardrum of the listener and the listener then comprehends what the speaker wanted to convey the speaker may want to throw sounds not together the speaker may want to throw the sounds at a lesser pace and sounds one by one and not together or a group of sounds together and then another group of sounds with some space in between all these are the possibilities amongst which the possibility where the speaker decides to throw the sounds together happens then that is called samasa this is the 
literal meaning of the word samasa the action of throwing the sounds together out of the oral cavity is what is samasa now why are these sounds thrown together out of the oral cavity by the speaker of course the action of throwing the sounds together is made to convey one meaning unit the sounds thus thrown out together act as one unit and convey one meaning unit this has got some correlation with the separate words as part of a sentence so this is what is the meaning of the word samasa and this applies to the overall process of compounding that the compound word which is audible is actually the audible sounds which are thrown out together by the speaker so a speaker sometimes may want ramaha and lakshmanaha to be produced at different times but at some time the speaker may want to produce them together rama lakshmana in this case the speaker has thrown out the sounds rama lakshmana together to convey one meaning unit and that is what makes the samasa and this is true about all types of samasas we have studied this aspect with respect to the tatpurusha samasa this is also true about avyayi bhava about bahuvrihi and also about the dvandva samasa now what this assumes is the next question what this assumes is that samasa always presupposes a sentence sentence first and then samasa there is no other way development sentence always first and then comes samasa this is a very important fact to note never so far have we found in sanskrit that a sentence consists of only samasa there has to be a sentence sometimes the explicit mention of the words necessary for a sentence to come into being may not be present but then that implicit presence is understood and the sentence is made complete so no complete linguistic communication consists of only samasas this is very important next we must understand what is the purpose of making a samasa if certain sounds are thrown out together to convey one meaning unit what is the purpose of reducing two units into one why why does one want to do this the simple answer provided is laghav or brevity in terms of eka buddhi vishayata making two independently separately cognized elements 
the subject of one cognition ek buddhi vishayata ek is one buddhi is cognition and vishaya is subject so to make two elements which are cognized independently or separately when they are made the subject of one cognition that is the purpose of making a samasa and that is what amounts to the brevity at the cognitive level this process may occur recursively as we have already seen so this process may occur recursively in the classical literature etc but in normal communication it is bound with certain limits we don't find compounds beyond certain number of constituents in the process of normal communication but in the literature the compound can consist of as many constituents as are desired by the respective speaker in a nutshell the purpose of making a samasa can be summed up by saying that samasa is a collective cognition and the sanskrit word that we have coined for this particular feature is sangraha the collective cognition as opposed to vigraha in which the cognition gets dissolved independent and separate cognition for each element so to summarize we can say that we studied the process of compounding and noted that the sentence is the input for this particular process with the interrelatedness of meaning in a sentence as a basic condition and the nominal root is the output of this particular process nominal root is a pratipadika we noted that never does this happen between one sup and one thing we also noted that the process of compounding is recursive in nature next we shall study the process of speech production at the cognitive stage the sentence structure the nature of interrelatedness of meanings in a sentence the concept of karaka the concept of vibhakti and the difference of samasa and the sentence or vakya the concept of karaka and vibhakti need to be studied in order to understand the base on which the samarata theory develops and the process of speech production at the cognitive stage etc is needed for us to understand how the samasas get produced and the sentence structure and the nature of interrelatedness of meanings needs to be known in order to know the exact place of samasa in the sentence structure and also the interrelatedness of meanings but this we shall do in the coming lecture these are the texts referred to thank you very much